Welcome today to our video devotional. It's uh, Wednesday, uh, March the 2nd, 2022. It's hard to believe we're in the third month of the year already. I want to reread our text that we've been using for the majority of this week. It's uh, Isaiah 51, 6. It says this, Lift up your, highs, your eyes to the heavens. Look on the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish away like smoke, and the earth will grow old like a garment. And those who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever and my righteousness will not be abolished. So yesterday we talked about the law of diminishing returns or what's called the second law of thermodynamics. Everything's in a state of entropy. I want to tell you the great news. The spiritual supersedes this law. And the creator is in the process of giving us eternity. A verse I'll probably use again this week in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has set eternity in their hearts. Do you know that eternity is set in your heart? Put there by the Creator, placed there uniquely while you were wonderfully being formed in your mother's womb. Hmm. Eternity. So salvation's forever. Righteousness will never be abolished. And unfortunately for us, it, it's amazing, even myself, how we get caught up in the temporary. When salvation is ours and righteousness can be ours because we've, we've been covered over with a robe of righteousness, which God's given us. He made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of of God in Christ Jesus. So when we get caught up in the temporary and we buy into things without considering what we leave out when we fill ourselves up with so much that is vapor, we make our life like, oh man, I just don't know why I'm here spinning my wheels. And by the way, as long as you and I are on the planet, we'll be constantly in this place where the physical has so much to do with our reality. And so we must learn over the course of time to bring our flesh into submission to the Spirit of God to truly find fulfillment in our life. And the less time we are spending on finding that fulfillment through salvation and righteousness, the more we'll be spending on temporary things which do not satisfy, which can create dissatisfaction and this sense of discontentment. Oh, let me try to explain it. I I don't know if it'll be adequate, but you'll think of ideas on your own that really speak truth to your own heart. The Holy Spirit will help you with this. Say, for instance, if, if you enroll your child in any program, you and I need to understand why we do so. Or if you're assisting with a grandchild, is it to fulfill yourself through their achievements because you wanted to do that and you didn't quite reach the mountain you wanted to get on top of? Or is it so your kid can do something that you missed out on while you were growing up. And then you just got a burr under your saddle about that. Or is it to fill up time because you don't know how to handle Johnny or Susie? <laughs> or is it diversionary so you can get them out of your hair for a while? Come on. So I'm going to say, why put Johnny or Susie in soccer, basketball, baseball, swimming, gymnastics, additional educational classes, 4-H, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Do you know why you're doing it? Did you have a plan for it? Is there a goal that you're shooting for with it? And you, you might say, you're just putting more pressure on me by asking me those questions. Well, I'm going to say the same thing about you. Is don't put it on your child. Now put it on you. Why, are you. why are you entangled in so many things in your life? Because you're discontent? Because you don't really know where you're going? Because you can't see how you should be spending so much time in pursuing righteousness and servanthood? Because that... Man, that doesn't seem to pay the bills. Mm. Can you articulate why you and your family are doing what they're doing? All right, you just giving in to the, the pressure. Uh, the other kids are doing it. 
Come on, it only costs 45 bucks or 85 bucks. Is it a whim? And before you go spending 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, because remember, you get involved in soccer and they travel. Get involved in basketball and they travel. And now you, got, you feel obligated to go to the game, you put your kid in, and now you've, you, you put them to a camp in the summer and they're playing basketball and now they're traveling in the summer and before you know it, you spent 8,000, 10,000 bucks. Now, before you ever started that process, did you think it through? Come on. And is that what you're sure God wants you to do as a parent with your child or the same for you? What you're doing with your life? And I might suggest because we're such a debt-ridden nation, and we have so many families up to here in financial debt. Why don't you replan what you're doing and put some of that money toward debt reduction, stay home, spend some quality time with your spouse and children? Just a thought. Now, listen, the law of the spiritual doesn't call us to miss out on life. And so what I've been saying to you isn't about snuffing out everything related to the temporal. That's not at all what you heard me say. It's, a, it's about learning how to bring everything in subjection to the lordship of Jesus Christ in our life. That bringing everything into subjection includes our eating habits, our educational habits, our physical life, our spiritual life, our sexual life, our decision making, our movie watching, our reading materials, where we take our vacation and how we spend our leisure time. I could go on, but I mean, that's enough to think about, isn't it? So based upon the text in Isaiah 51, the heavens will vanish away like a smoke, the earth will grow old like a garment, and those who dwell in it will die in like manner. It must cause us to pause. And measure the use of our time, our talent, our resources for that which lasts and passes not away. I guess what I'm saying is I'm begging you, if you watch this video, will you take a pause in your life? Take, take a Saturday off if you're not working your regular job and get your family together and think about, it. is this what we're supposed to be doing with our life? Is this what would best honor God and bring the glory to him? Is this the best way to spend our money and our resources and our, all of our quality time? I'm asking, but you're going to have to deal with it at your level, in your life, in your family. God bless you as you do so. Oh, Father, we always need those moments, Lord, where we, we're introspective without being critical. And I pray today that you'll help us see the things that we've done that are right, and you'll help us see the corrections we might need to make the adjustments, some fine-tuning, some major overhaul. And may we be led of the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, by the direction of the responses in our spirit to the Spirit of God so that you can be glorified through all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to say think on these things. Take some time. Think on these things and uh, desire in your heart to bring glory to God. Have a great day today.